Moshe, 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 come to me. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Yisak, the God of Yaakov. God bless you. Let's get started. Our time is short and sweet. I All I want to do is bless you the way God has blessed me. Shalom, everyone. Yes, it's 10 to that. Uh, our holiday, mournful holiday, remembering our history once again. Jews are defined by many criterion, but one of the biggest ones is our history. You know, we've been around, we're going to stick around, and this Jew is here to stay. Um, Yisrael Chai, yes, we're here forever. I just want to talk about something historical in context, but try to give it a kind of um, a fun perspective per se. Comedy is always nice, right? There's so many... Don't be so serious, right? I've been told that before. But anyway... 1967. You had the Six-Day War. Yeah. Israel gained more territory during the, during the Six-Day War than any other time since 1948. As you know, the Arabs did not respect the UN recommended uh, lines of demarcation and boundaries and things like that. The West Bank, East Jerusalem, all of that stuff in 1948. So they went to war against the young country of Israel. Not so young, uh, about 3,700 years old, but reborn in 1948. But in 1967, Israel launched a preemptive strike against Egypt. Yeah, Egypt was lining up tanks along their border with uh, Israel. So as soon as Israel struck Egypt, the Arabs joined in, and they were ready for war anyway. So you had Jordan and Syria attacking uh, Israel as well. Anyway, just like Judah Maccabee, Israel pulled off the impossible and beat back Syria and Jordan and beat back Egypt, even down to Cairo. Yeah, one time uh, we had the uh, Sinai Peninsula. Amazing, right? We gave Gaza away in uh, 2005. Thank you, uh, President George uh, Walker Bush. But anyway, 1967, yes. I have pictures of it. We had IDF Army soldiers with the helmets raised and the Israeli flag there on top of Temple Mount, Har Habi, yeah, with that, that stupid Dome of the Rock thing in the background, yeah. That anytime you see a dome over uh, territory, it's a sign of conquest. That's why every mosque, most mosques you see have a dome above it. That's their sign of their conquest. It's supposed to be like they're looking up to the heavens or whatever, but anyway. So we had full control of Temple Mount for the first time in 2,000 years. Yes, in 1967. Oh, yeah, we did. We had control over East Jerusalem. Yeah, we unified that capital. We had control over the West Bank. We didn't have before. Yes, yes, we drew more lines, security 
boundary lines, you know. Um, Samaria, yeah, Judea and Samaria. 1973, we had the Golan Heights, yeah. Saad's army lost that battle when he took the highlands to attack Israel. But anyway, long story short, on 10 Tevet, we are mourning and fasting yet again another year because we don't have a temple. We don't have the first temple and don't have the second temple and every other temple in between that. Why? I don't know. Uh, Ezra and Nehemiah had temple dedication ceremonies in their time. And Judah Maccabee, we know about that because I've educated you. You should know that. He uh, took over the uh, Temple Mount and, and built a small shelter there for the Holy Holies, the menorah candle that's very famous. He dedicated that. And then the Hebron Hasmonean king Herod, even he... And he didn't have a born of a Jewish mother. Even he built a beautiful, glamorous temple. It was all about himself, but he built a temple. Told the Romans what to do with themselves. It's, but anyway, where is, where is our courage? 1967. We went on an apology tour. Yeah, we went on one of those Obama apology tours. We apologized all uh, to every Arab state in Egypt said, we're sorry that we made you attack us because we're Jewish and you're not and you wanted to, to kill us and sorry that you felt implied, you know, like you wanted to kill us. So we're sorry about all that. How, can you recognize our, our right to exist now? What do we need to give you? Uh, land for peace? Uh, yeah, land for peace, land for peace. Yeah, yeah, we gave all that land back all the spoils of war. The United States didn't do that. We got Alaska from Russia really cheap. But we gave all that land back. Most of it. Yeah. Four out of five, the holiest of Jewish sites in Israel belong under the authority of the Palestinian Authority. Yeah, that's the Grand Mufti in Jordan. King of Jordan. So what have we learned on 10 to that for this year? Yeah. 1967, the rabbis during that time put the Talmud, oral tradition, before written tradition, which were the laws of Moshe, saying that God's anger and need to forgive, uh, our need to be forgiven, would not be appeased without the temple on Mount Moriah. And, and instead, we gave it over to infidels. And the arguments, believe it or not, because rabbis could not agree in 1967 over the right blueprint recommendation made by the prophet Ezekiel in Babylon. Sounds crazy? But essentially, the rabbis probably came together and reached secret agreements among themselves because I'm, I'm sh pretty sure the government contacted the head rabbi at that time, said, you want to build a temple? He's going to start another war. No, not really. You know, they considered their authority, perceived authority around the world, all the synagogues around the world we have in the post-temple era, that considered their jobs, yeah. Much of that would go away if you had a temple there and a high priest and Cohen and Levy running the show. Yeah. So we made it about people instead of about Hashem in 1967. Now, because of that, this year, 10th Tevet, is another year in which this Jew was compelled to fast. No water, no food until sunset. Instead of mourning, we should be celebrating this day, folks. That's what I'm trying to get to. Come on. What can you, what can you do? Be angry all the time? Laugh at our naive, nativity, our passiveness, our lack of uh, common sense, whatever you call it. We're afraid 1967 building a temple then because of war, and we're afraid today to even allow a Jew in Ukraine to come to Israel and Aliyah and pray on Temple Mount. They're not allowed. You're not allowed to pray on Temple Mount if you're a Jew. If you're Muslim, you can play soccer on temp Temple Mount with your, with your family. But anyway, you're afraid for a war. Well, war is already declared on you, Israel. What do you think all those terror tunnels from Hezbollah built that went deep into northern Israel? They were big enough to drive an army through. That's called a Trojan horse. 
That's called a prelude to war. Bibi said there's no imminent war with Hezbollah and Lebanon, even though our Defense Department have equivocated Hezbollah with ISIS. And in Gaza, you know, recently we signed a ceasefire with uh, Hamas after they ran out of missiles. 500 plus missiles and rockets launched into southern Israel and before that they scorched southern Israel irreplaceable habitat down there scorched that's not an act of war <laughs> all you all you can do is just laugh be angry or be crazy again this is Rev Yarab and Emmett signing out Please share the knowledge of wealth and love and truth to everyone out there that's willing to hear it, the truth. If they're resisted to that, try to live the truth, to draw them in. Listen, I love you with all my heart and soul. Remember the tenth of Tibet is about mourning multiple, multiple things. Primarily, we do not have a temple to worship Hashem in a way that we did in yesteryear, you know, in the times of King David, King Solomon, King Hezekiah. Uh, it's, it, it just rips and tears out the DNA of the Jew. And there's so many things for us to lament you know, about during the 10th of Tevat in which we have a hard stop in our life and we fast. Take care. Shalom Aleichem.